This video is a demonstration of data manipulation. What we're going to do is take our foot and mouth disease data and summarise each property with a property type depending on what kind of animals are kept. So we'll start by introducing a new column. I'm going to put it here after all of our animal count columns. And I'm going to call this total. And all it's going to represent is the total number of animals that were on that property as recorded in this spreadsheet. So it's the sum of the counts of animals of dairy, beef, sheep, pigs, goats and deer. So up here you can see the sum from P3 to U3. And in total for the first property there were 310. We're going to copy that formula to the other rows in this column by double clicking the little black box. If we press end and down we can go down to the bottom and make sure that it has definitely copied where we want it to. And an up takes us back to the top of our spreadsheet. So now what I want to do is to put four new columns in and we're going to hit these F cattle, F sheep, F pig and H type. We need to choose a criteria to determine what proportion of animals on the property need to be of a particular type for that farm to be of that type. So for example, how many pigs have to be on the farm for us to call it a pig farm rather than a mixed farm? For the purposes of this exercise, we're going to choose 80%. So I'm going to put 0.8 in row one of each of these columns to represent that. So now we want to put some formulas in these columns to determine if more than 80% of the animals on that farm were cattle, sheep or pigs. So for example, for the cattle column, we want to know if the sum of all of the cows on the farm, so that'll be the dairy cows and the beef cows, divided by the total number of animals on that farm is greater than our 80%. And I'm going to press F4 so that that's absolutely referenced. You can see down the bottom here we've got the syntax of this if statement, so that's the order in which Excel wants us to give it the information. We've given it a logical test, so then comma, if it's true, then I want for this to return a C, and if it's not true, then I want for it to return a blank cell. So this says, if the total number of cows, dairy and beef added together, divided by the total number of animals on the farm is greater than 80%, then put a C in the cell, and if it's not, then leave a blank cell. And we press enter, and you can see it's left a blank cell because two over 310 is not greater than 80%. We're gonna create similar statements in these other columns. So for the sheep, if the number of sheep divided by the total number on the farm is greater than 0.8, absolutely referenced, then give me an S. And if not, give me nothing, close the bracket. And finally for the pigs, if the number of pigs on the property divided by the total number of animals on the property is greater than 0.08 absolute, then give me a P and otherwise give me nothing. So you can see this is working well. It's giving me a blank instead of a C because it's not a cattle farm. It's giving me a blank instead of an S because it's not a sheep farm. And it's giving me a P because 308 of those 310 animals are a pig. So what we can then do is copy each of these formulas down the columns and we should be able to fill in the property types for most of them. Now at this point you can see that we've got errors coming up in some of these cells. You get this little exclamation mark box which tells you that there's an error going on. This is an error in value. Now the reason why that's occurring is because we've got some missing values in our animal number column. So you can see that I'm getting these error messages in the same rows where I have these blank cells. And the difficulty of course arises because we don't know if there were no pigs on these properties or if the pigs just weren't recorded. But we're going to have to make an assumption to deal with that at the moment. In this case, we're going to assume all of these missing values are actually zeros. So what we're going to do is replace all of these blank cells with zeros. What we can do is to select these columns, shift end down, we'll select those columns down to the bottom. Then we can use the find function in Excel to find the blank cell and to replace them. So if we come here to the home tab on the ribbon, come along to the end, you can see it has find and select, and there's an option called replace. So we want to find blanks and we want to replace them with a zero and it's only going to do that in our selection. So find next, it's found one, we can replace that one, replace, we're happy this is working well, then we can replace all. 3,439 replacements we've made. So that now will make these columns happy and stop those errors. We now have each of these properties categorised depending on if they had over 80% of a single animal type. Now we want to assign a herd flock type descriptor, H type, to each of the rows. And again, we can use a conditional statement to say that. So if this is a C, it's important that you use capitals or lowercase, the same as what you put in the W column. 
and it's important that you use the quotation marks to tell Excel that it's looking for text information. So if W is C, then we want it to say return a C. If W is not C, then I want it to, to test X. So then if X is equal to S, then give me an S. And if X is not an S, then I want you to have a look at Y and see if Y is P. And if it is, I want you to give me a P. And if it's not, then I want to give you an M. Because if by this stage it's not C, it's not an S, and it's not a P, then it must be a mixed flock type where there's not an 80% proportion of a single species. And we're going to call that mixed. Close the bracket. We had three sets of brackets, one, two, three. So we need to make sure we put three at the end and then press enter. And that's going to give us our herd flock type. And again, little black box down in the corner, double click that, and it will go down and fill the column using those conditional statements to work out what the herd flock type is. We now have each of our infected properties classified into what type of bar they are according to the criteria that we've set.